of the hundreds of researchers that I've interviewed, scientists, you name it, no one has showed a greater overall knowledge and the skill to articulate it in an easily understandable way than Jeffrey M. Smith. His detailed study of GMOs, Monsanto, suppressing science and research is just amazing. The bees are dying in a thing called colony collapse disorder, which is not well understood. Now, it's, in my opinion, it's definitely not primarily caused by GMOs because they're dying in large numbers in other countries where they don't plant GMOs. More recent information suggests that the seed treatments from neonicotinoid insecticides are the cause. Now, these are insecticides created from nicotine or tobacco. When biotech companies introduced a variety of BT corn that kills the rootworm, they found that it wasn't very effective for the first few weeks of the corn's, corn plant's life. So the, the rootworm or, or soil-based organisms could destroy the seed and the early plant. So what they did is they developed a way to encapsulate a systemic insecticide based on tobacco called neonicotinoid insecticides and um, put them on the seeds and the insecticide would then infiltrate into the seed and into the plant and exude out of all the different cells of the plant for several weeks. That way it would sort of do the job to protect against the soil-based organisms until the BT kicked in. But this neonicotinoid insecticide is known to disrupt the navigation ability and memory of bees where they may not be able to get back to the hive. Now, it was believed that the seed treatments, that these type of seed treatments were responsible in large part or completely for colony collapse disorder. And when they banned these type of insecticides from several countries in Europe, like in Italy, the next year there was no colony collapse the next year except in one hive where they used the old seeds that still had it. They couldn't figure out the vector, how it was that the bees were getting the seed treatment from the plants until they discovered that plants um, they exude a certain nectar or, or water that's concentrated with their nutrients in the morning, like dew. And these, these uh, bees fan the, uh, the hive to keep the air conditioning going all night, and they get exhausted, so they immediately leave the hive in the morning and go to the, the nearest source of nutrition, which is this nectar on the plants nearby. But this nectar or water contains the insecticide as well. So now they understand the vectors in terms of how these honeybees are getting large doses of this insecticide. And one of the characteristics of colony collapse disorder is that there's oftentimes no bees in the hive, that they go out and they don't come back. So we think that the neonicotinoid seed treatments, which were increased because of the use of genetic engineering, is probably responsible for, or at least in large part, of colony collapse disorder. But there are more deaths among the bees in the United States than in other countries. And we think that that increase might be the result of genetically engineered crops, particularly the BT toxin, which is designed to kill insects. It's not acutely toxic to bees, but in some studies, they found that the bees that grabbed pollen from the corn plants that were genetically engineered, they actually were susceptible to a viral infection, whereas the controls were not. There was another study that showed that when the bees took the pollen, the the genes from the genetically modified crops transferred into the microorganisms inside the guts of the bees. This also happens in, in humans. This could mean long-term effects from short-term exposure. Genetically modified foods and crops are one of the most dangerous health and environmental catastrophes we're facing. And yet very few people know about it. There's very few money. There's very few organizations funding those of us who are trying to stop it. I mean, I struggle year after year with you know, a skeleton crew, and I see things like global warming just pulling millions and millions of dollars, and we just get chump change and volunteers to try and stop this juggernaut.